I believe that there exists a way to identify each and every model year of a Cherokee XJ just by looking at it from a few feet away. Through 17 model years, they hardly changed in an overall sense, but the more you learn about them, the more you'll see. Obviously, the main cutoff is your 1997 redesign. You can positively identify if an XJ is a 96 prior or 97 plus by the header panel, the front windows, the taillights, you know, that's not too difficult. But there's a lot of reasons you may need to know what year an XJ is precisely. Maybe there's listing pictures of it at a junkyard. Maybe a for sale ad is a scam and they're pretending to know what they're selling. Maybe you found one in the wild and you're just curious, but you know, not curious enough to just plug in the VIN number somewhere. In this video, we of course assume that a given XJ hasn't been modified with swapped parts. For example, some people like to swap 97 plus XJ fenders in a header panel onto MJs, which, you know, obviously weren't made after 97, so there's always a chance of discrepancy. These Jeeps are all 20 plus years old, and there's no telling what parts someone may have replaced in all that time. Let's take the first generation then. You know, as well as I do, that definitively, based on this one picture, this Jeep is a 1984 to 1996. It has the older style turn signals, the separated front windows, and the more boxy body lines. It's no contest to declare this is definitely not a 1997 to 2001 model. But what year is it? We can firstly narrow it down by counting the slots in the grill. In 84 through 87, the grill had 10 slots, and in 1988, it switched to 8 slots. So by the grill, we know this can't be anything earlier than 1988. Secondly, we can catch a glimpse of the rear axle. The Chrysler 8 and a quarter and its unmistakable flat bottom was not available in the XJ until 1991. So now we've shaved off the Rinnix years. With this as our only picture, that's as far as I can narrow it down. We know it's a 91 to 96, but assuming you were standing there in person or had access to more pictures, taking a look at the backside, we can narrow it down even further. On the tailgate, we can see the badge for the 4 liter high output, which just further confirms this is not a Renix. I can also see the third brake light, which wasn't added to the XJ until 1994, so now we know this has to be a 94 to 96. Peeking over the corner of the driver window, I note this steering wheel has an airbag, which was added in 1995, and now we've narrowed this Jeep down to one of only two potential model years with only two pictures. But we can do better. 1996 is when they switched to OBD2, so there's a few things you can check. The engine control module, the transfer case output shaft, and the presence of an OBD2 port under the dashboard would all tell you exactly what year this is. But the only additional picture we have is this one from the inside, and it has the older, skinnier style four-wheel drive lever, meaning this Jeep is a 1995. We can of course play the same game with the 97 plus years. 97s still have the older style dome lights, 98s have the new dome lights with the old roof rails that go all the way to the front of the roof, 99s have a printed 4 liter badge with the new shorter roof rails, and 2000s have different decals on the doors instead of the fenders. But 2001s... How do we tell if an XJ is a 2001? That is the question. Because they're the last year, they didn't change anything from 2000. Chrysler knew the XJ would stop production, so there wasn't anything left to update. 2001s are almost exactly identical to 2000s. I mean, there do exist ways to tell them apart if they happen to have certain options. You know, for example, if it doesn't have California emissions, it has to be a 2000. If it does, though, it could be either. If it has a 2.5 liter, it has to be a 2000. If it's a 4 liter, it could be either. Neither of these tell us definitively if it's a 2001. That's what I'm after. You can sometimes tell a 2000, but you can never tell a 2001. But hold on, let's rewind a few seconds. These ones are almost exactly identical to 2000s. Almost. Having an 01 myself, this irked me. If I see a 2000 plus XJ in the wild, how am I? The 2001 guy, supposed to tell which of the two years it is. This keeps me up at night! I'm not crazy, you're crazy! But I had found something. An indistinguishable detail. Nobody else on the earth could possibly have ever noticed. Something so small and insignificant. Something 
right under our noses. Comparing my 201s to my friend's 2000s, I had found a discrepancy. It's on the screen right now. On 2000 and prior models, the screws that mount the side markers to the header panel are a standard Phillips head, but on 2001, they're a T10 Torx bit. Finally, I had my secret weapon. Now, I know the secret. I know how to tell apart 2001 XJs. And at last, I have unlocked true enlightenment. I have transcended the physical limitations of mortality. This 01 Cherokee happens to have Phillips head screws for its side marker lights, much like its older 2000 brother here. But later in 2001, things were changed to Torx bit. So the question is, when? Stars shows up one day, kicks down the door, and dethrones my reign of terror by having a 2001 model year Cherokee with Phillips head screws on the side markers. Well, what the hell? This Jeep only had 90,000 miles on it, clearly had the original header panel, and was, in fact, a 2001 by confirmation of the VIN. But how? How does every single other 01 I've ever seen have Torx bits here, but this one doesn't? And so to find answers, I launched an investigation by interrogating everyone on the internet with a 2001. In the Cherokee XJ Discord server, I staged a coup and tracked down every 2001 owner I could find and asked them two questions. One, do the side markers have Phillips screws or T10 Torx bits? And two, what is the production date of the Jeep? You can find the production date on the door sticker. You can see my 2001 was manufactured on the 8th month of the 2000th year, August 2000 as a model year 2001. You can actually get the exact date from the bottom left corner. The Redeemer was made on the 17th hour of the 25th day of August 2000, and it has Torx bits. Stars' Jeep was made on June 12, 2000. That's the earliest model year 01 Cherokee I've yet to see, and along with Rider Bike and Steiner W also having 2001s from June 2000, they also have Phillips screws on the side markers. So now we know this isn't an outlier. Now we know that at some point during early model year 2001, specifically between the production months of June and August 2000, Chrysler switched from the Phillips head screws to T10 Torx bits on the side markers, further confirmed by everyone else who had later model 01s still with the Torx bits. So, I was on to something, and chances are, if you see a 2001, it will most likely have Torx bits. But, well, I was left unfulfilled. This still is not a definitive giveaway. If it has Torx bits, it's a 2001, but if it has Phillips screws, it could be either. What, what if we could track down the exact date they switched to the Torx bits? It's been done before in the XJ world. Using only production dates and process of elimination, the ancient forums were able to find the exact date the manual XJ switched from the Peugeot 105 to the AX15. It's March 10th, 1989. So the answer is out there, and I already know it's within a two-month window. So I started meticulously picking through Facebook listings of 2001s for sale, asking for a picture of the door sticker and the side marker, offering no context or explanation whatsoever. I dug up any loose ends I could find, asking acquaintances of acquaintances if anyone out there happens to have a 2001. My friend Clay, who's currently in the military, stationed in Southern California, knows a guy on base with a 2001 Cherokee. The only way to contact him was through Discord, so I sent a message and waited. But finding and asking this stupid question to every single 2001 owner I happen across isn't sustainable. There were just over 200,000 Cherokees made for 2001, and rigorously sifting through every one would take a lifetime, especially when a good chunk of them were sent overseas anyway. The actual owner of the first Torx bit XJ might not even speak English. Clay's friend messaged me back, but again, he ended up having a June 2000, so I was like, oh, okay, another Phillips screw one. It had Torx bits. What? What's the door sticker say? 
June 23rd, 2000. Okay, okay, calm down. All right, now we know. Now we know the Torque Spitz started in late June, and our date range has suddenly been narrowed down to the seven days between June 16th and June 23rd of 2000. We had made a breakthrough. I told everyone in the Cherokee server, and where most everyone was actually pretty excited about it, the moderators were not. They were fed up with me talking about nothing but goddamn side marker screws for the past month, and each of them sent a multi-paragraph explanation of where, why, and how I needed to shut the f*** up about the goddamn Torx bits. Alright, fine. Fine, mods. I don't need your help anyway. So I kicked myself out of the server, because clearly the mods were in on this conspiracy and didn't want me finding answers. I was close, and they knew it. So I only had one option left. I was going all the way to the top, to the Jeep Stellantis HQ in Toledo, Ohio, where I would find the truth. You know, at no point during this did I ever think Maybe I've gone too far. So, uh, I'm at the Toledo assembly plant in Ohio, and everybody's on strike. So I show up, and the whole complex is shut down. All of the employees are on strike, wearing red and waving flags around, of course, very likely because of the Torx bits. So I poked around and asked, what the hell's going on? The United Auto Workers Union had begun their strike that very day, and I had literally no idea about it. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. They're like, oh, so you on second shift? I'm like, what? I don't even work here. I'm just some dude. Oh, okay. Here, take this sign and go stand over there. Look, they gave me a sign. So I look for a place I don't even work for. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> Fair wages. Let's get it. Boy. I'm not even employed right now. I'm totally on the news. I'm totally on ABC Action News. I'm standing right here in the background of this shot. I wonder if I'm actually there. I don't know if this is live or not. Standing here in the background of this camera shot from ABC 13, I had to tell someone. I had to call my friends and show them I'm on the news. So I called Bryant and told him what was going on. He managed to find this screenshot from the website of me being on the phone with him. There you go, everyone. I've made it in life. But this is where things got interesting. What I'm about to say next might not necessarily not be violating some sort of licensed legal contract with a certain company. If this video ever does get taken down, it'll be because of this section here. So, with the assembly complex and headquarters shut down, I still had to find out when the Torx bit started. I was here on a mission, basically undercover. I obviously couldn't just go find a manager or something, so I tried to look for someone chill who was really bored. I ended up talking with a, a certain individual who has to remain anonymous because said certain individual actually gave me our final clue, our final piece of the puzzle. Whenever Stellantis, and by extension Chrysler, makes a change to a vehicle, however small and insignificant, that change has to be well documented, and because some of the extremely trivial things like the type of screws used can be hard to keep track of, those changes are always made on a Monday. That's been the case for decades in our seven-day window between June 16th and June 23rd, 2000, leaves only one potential Monday in that date range. So although there is a bit of guesswork involved, I'm damn near 100% certain the 2001 Jeep Cherokee switched the side marker screws to Torx bits on the first hour of the 19th day of the 6th month of the 2000th year. If this date is accurate, we can calculate how many 2001s have Torx bits instead of Phillips screws. Starting on May 29, 2000, there were 217,048 XJs made for model year 2001. Of those, 96,594 were built during the year 2000. Assuming they kept a relatively consistent pace of output, this means 88,226 of them were made on or after June 19th. This tells us there were only 8,368 2001 Jeep Cherokees that have Phillips screws 
on the side markers. No wonder it took me so long to find one. So congratulations, stars. Rider bike. Steiner W. U3 each own one of 8,368 XJs of the Philips Screw 01s. If you lined up every single Cherokee ever made and chose one entirely at random, you'd only have a 0.29% chance to pick an 01 with Phillips screws. So, now we know. The real question is, what will we do with this information? Hey people, I just want to say really big thanks to everyone who helped me out on this one. This was by far the largest coordinated effort thing I've ever done in my life. And together, we found the answer. So, no hard feelings to anyone in the Discord server. I'm back in now. There's an invite link in the description. Make sure to check out Operation Other Side, the unasked for sequel to this video where I went on strike in Toledo, met up with Bunny who's got like seven Cherokees, rode the ferry across Lake Michigan to buy Kyle's Comanche, and of course had many other adventures along the way. Again, thank you all. That was awesome.